Netflix. Brony bait. Rarity is all alone to represent the unicorns. Maybe it's appropriate considering a unicorn's rarity. Boo! We are the guardians of friendship. Fun fact. They couldn't use Guardians of Harmony because the trademark was owned by some toy company. The 3D animation takeover of a franchise with deep 2D roots in the 80s and the revitalization of cartoons in the 2010s. It's inevitable. At this rate, the live-action Megan is coming. Brony bait. Argyle sets a wet paintbrush onto the previously pristine table. These figures would be shameless product placement, only if their depiction wasn't so unrealistically durable and well-made. Also, AJ has her hat, so there's no way these are meant to resemble official toys. Maritime Bay alone has multiple outlet types reminiscent of Type B, Type G, and the happy little Type K. Maybe they should work on uniting the three outlet types before the three pony types. One of many quirks of this 3D animation means eyes and teeth can be seen through some materials. Well, when I grow up, I'm going to show every pony that we're right. Oh. Most kids want to grow up to be doctors, teachers, or movie stars. Sunny wants to grow up and have lots of Twitter followers. Sunny's hooves are upside down. In fact, all of the G5 ponies have their heart hooves facing the opposite direction. This used to be a clever reference to actual horse hooves, but now they're just there for the sake of being there. And while we're pointing out frustrating fundamental design changes, let's get the singular cutie marks in out of the way. Buy our toys! Good night, Dad. Good night, my little pony. Roll the credits and buckle up, because we'll reach G6 in no time at this pace. Apparently, there's not much news in Maritime Bay, so the local newspaper prints the same stories on both sides. It's impressive Sunny can make a balloon animal with hooves while wearing rollerblades, but it's even more impressive she was able to make this balloon appear out of thin air. We all know the best way to change some pony's mind is to plaster bumper stickers everywhere. Glorifying graffiti good for the whole family. This little filly lifts, bro. Hitch had nothing better to do and was behind this sign waiting on Sunny for hours. Like you don't know, today is the annual presentation at Cantor Logic. Thanks for explaining it for us like she didn't know, Hitch. I'm asking you as your friend, Sunny. Please try not to pull any stunts today. Okay, okay. I'll try. Sunny abuses her friendship with Hitch to manipulate and deceive. Somehow, she's supposed to be the good guy in all this. Hitch runs after a violator of Code 33 while Sprout goes into the factory. But then Sprout immediately discovers Hitch's twin brother already in the factory. More likely than not, pushing the buttons repeatedly is preventing the system from stopping safely. Sunny briefly has dummy wings appear before that segment actually starts. Earth Pony engineers included a housing for the retractable light, but more impressive is their use of quantum physics to phase it through the floor. Slime, meant to capture and contain, is actually slippery and doesn't slow Sunny much at all. Fully automated sequence, which apparently can't be interrupted, was pre-programmed to take and to return Sunny's sign. How do you suggest that we defend ourselves? With hugs and cupcakes? <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. If you had a friend who could fly... Sunny completely ignores this very reasonable question and acts surprised when No Pony takes her flighty anecdotes seriously. That green slime must really stink because it looks like Sunny's attracting flies. Ooh, is every pony playing hide and seek? One comparison Izzy has to Pinkie Pie is the uncertainty of whether she's aware of what's going on and just a wacky free spirit or unaware of what's going on with the intelligence of a toddler. That seems a little harsh. This guy falling off a cliff without dying could be a sin, but the water splash appearing before he has any chance of hitting water definitely is. Alarm is useless and has no pony left to alarm. It also disappears later on. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet. Izzy implies movie theaters exist in Bridalwood. Hitch has an abundance of time to stop Sunny from pushing the button, but he doesn't because then the movie couldn't happen. Shipper bait. Fun fact, more time was spent rendering these glorious beans than rendering the reflections in every pony's eyes. Usually we see the same reflection of Maritime Bay, even when overlooking Zephyr Heights or walking through the middle of a grass field. No magic? If it makes you feel any better, we did have it. It just poof, disappeared. It was an especially tragic day for the Pegasi. Do Pegasi wear horseshoes or do they just weigh you down? Ironically, Sunny asked this right in front of a shoe advertisement. Surely pony hooves lack the precision to use a touchscreen, but this pony has no excuse for missing the screen completely. Very special place in my heart, but not as much as you guys. We love you so much, Pat! Glorifying parasocial relationships. 
good for the whole family. We soon learn they're using wires to fake their flight, but the lighting and broadcast tricks used to remove those wires don't seem possible here. Not to mention they intersect each other's wires, as well as the balcony itself. Here it is, the infamous pony holding a smartphone shot which broke the fandom. There are few things more sinful than the nonsensical corporate mandate making a cute fantasy cartoon that much more like our own dystopian reality. No pony must know they're here. Check it out, Pip Squeaks. Pip has complete and unrestricted access to the city's screens. She overrides the queen, broadcast companies, and the almighty advertisers. And confiscate the book. It is of utmost importance to confiscate that book. But don't bother searching the bag, it's not like there could be anything else in there, especially not more books. Sunny must be the one putting on the My Little Pony reruns. It is Unicorn and Pegasus propaganda after all. Did Sunny Starshine help Unicorn escape? The answer is no, but Sunny Star Scout sure did. Use a song in a YouTube video and you get a copyright claim. Use a song in your movie, but change it up a bit so it doesn't look obvious you copied, and you get a Netflix deal. She says watch your step to refer to a considerable drop. They don't even have a way of getting back up. All pony kinds did used to be friends! This is one of many revelations which don't make sense. It's strange that so much time has passed for so many things to be different, but at the same time, not enough for more ponies to have ventured out and met others or find locations such as this. It's as if the movie is doing a great job hinting at some kind of conspiracy or cover-up, only to never actually reveal anything at all. But I'm just so tired of living that ridiculous lie. Zip has no motivation to be tired of the royal lies, except because she's a main character, and all main characters have to be flawlessly virtuous. What is that? That's the Pegasus crystal. No, I meant some other thing. What made you think I was asking about that? Besides the camera close-up, that is. Maybe. You lost your magic because the crystals were separated. This is an outrageous stretch. Not only does Sunny have no reason to believe the crystals would bring back magic, but they don't even fit together all that well in the first place. It's only fair to retroactively assume this middle section used to be the Earth Pony crystal. But upon further inspection, there's clearly a structural frame not present elsewhere, a lack of floor trim, and a very clear pathway which suggests this was always an open space with no window for the Earth Ponies after all. Pip's performing at tonight's royal celebration. We just need to swap the real crown with a fake. Let's steal the crown while my mom's awake and at a crowded event. Taking it while she sleeps would be too easy. Where's the fun in that? Maximum sneaky. Zip could have handled the entire theft alone, but it's nice she includes her new friends to make them feel useful. Queen Haven doesn't feel this. Also, good thing Sunny didn't get tangled up in her invisible wires. Fun fact, Queen Haven is actually, literally, definitely, completely, entirely, without a doubt, fully blind. Malfunction as a result of oxymoronic fear. Too afraid to know jumping up here is a bad idea, but not afraid enough to simply leave the room. Hitch has an abundance of time after he happens to notice the three, but instead of giving chase, he reveals them to the crowd, while also needlessly standing around waiting for some wacky shenanigans to reveal himself. And yet, somehow, this crowd is less interested in the fugitives and more interested in speculating that none of the royals can fly. The logical deduction is that Pip is using wires because she's doing a special performance. They just got lucky this immediate wild speculation is true. Sunny realizes they lost the crystal, then seconds later, Pip of all ponies, hoof delivers it to them. The when, the what, the who, the how, and the why of this situation is all a little too convenient. I know a way out. Come on. Pampered social media star knows her way around the alleys of the inner city. I know unicorns like shiny things. The unicorns were the scary ones with laser horns, so liking shiny things should be more your thing, Hitch. This is in fact their second night spent together on the run, but everything about the tone of this scene feels like their first time doing this. Guess a woodsy campfire is more aesthetically pleasing than their first night sleeping in a city dumpster, huh? Are you sure about all this? Because if we just go back to Maritime Bay... What have we got to lose? By giving magic back to our enemies? Sunny seems to be under the impression they're only returning magic for their three newfound friends and not entire civilizations of angry magical ponies. What have we got to lose? I'm actually glad you're here, Hitch. We all are. Hitch has no reason to stick around. Sure, these two are implied to have been good friends in childhood, but during the course of this movie, they've been nothing but deceptive and antagonistic. Theme. Come on, rip out all the pages of your history book. 
thanks to that lyric, some pony might finally discover Twilight Sparkle's forgotten grave with all the rolling around she's doing. Ponies as far away as this one here hitch almost say mayonnaise, but no pony hears Izzy list all of the forbidden words in quick succession. The fact no pony cares or notices four new unicorns visiting Bridalwood is the most indication of civilization beyond the mere three locations we've seen so far. This crystal is sitting out in the open and should be much easier to steal than the last one, yet for some reason Sunny feels compelled to acquire it legitimately this time. She doesn't even need to steal it for that matter, just touch them together, right? T. Hold the milk. By the way, the tea here is free, right? All I got on me is Earth Pony currency. Sunny points to a shelf full of items, but somehow he still knows what she wants. Big talk for a little pony. I think you'll find I'm average height. Average height for an Earth Pony, at least. Almost blew your cover, Sonny. Alpha Biddle can alter the rules after the deal is made. Pray that he doesn't alter it any further. Both ponies agree. Best out of three. Sonny didn't agree to any of this. The basis for her gambling the crystal was that she knows how to solve this totally not trademark puzzle cube. So why is she still going along with this? If this critter is powering Sunny's side of the game, maybe this trip gave her an unfair advantage. There's no other reason for her to be magically so good at this game. It's either the trip or Sunny's own flawless protagonist syndrome. Oh look, the queen is here now. We could have seen a whole movie about how she escaped custody and just happened to stumble into Bridalwood. The unicorns conveniently catch up despite being easily warded off with a few forbidden words. And at the same time, the Pegasus guards also just happen to conveniently find the queen after what must have been days of pointless pursuit. Give me back my crystals and leave Bridalwood! That crystal belongs to me! Not anymore, it doesn't! Queen Haven has no reason to assume one of the crystals he refers to as her own. And Alpha Biddle has no reason to be addressing the Queen with this demand. Does any pony have any clue what is going on at this point? The animosity between these two is never explained. The beginning of the movie spends considerable time establishing fear of other magical pony types, but that seems to be more of an Earth Pony thing, and these two hate each other for reasons unknown. You Pegasi always thought you were better than us. Hey, that's our queen you're talking to. How dare you disrespect our disgraced liar of a queen who we're actually here to get vengeance upon for ourselves now that I think about it. Surrender the crystal or I'll use my powers against you. Alpha Biddle is still so caught up in arguing with the queen that he forgot Sunny has both crystals still. Either that or a different rider stepped in and hadn't read up to this point. Suddenly, the unicorns aren't incapacitated by the forbidden word because it's convenient for the plot. There was never any indication that this would bring back magic, yet Sunny is completely and blindly devoted to this mission. Characters having to act stupid for the story to progress is the ultimate sin. This magic light which guides her to the thing her dad made, which just happens to be a third crystal representing the Earth Ponies he either didn't know about or failed to convey before his off-screen passing. Oh, and this crystal just happens to have not been part of the depiction which led Sunny on this crazy journey in the first place. It's all contrivances piled on top of plot convenience, piled on top of wild speculation, but it all ends up alright in the end, because who needs plot when you have pop? This pony removes a helmet three times in a row. We have to warn them! Good call, Sunny. Cowardly run away from the situation under the guise of warning them. It's not like Sprout may be able to beat you there, or that more good could be done here with an emotional speech or simply by dismantling the thing. We see both later on, anyway. It's not too crazy for these three to have come to Maritime Bay to find Sunny, but boy is it convenient they ran into Sunny here and not in town like another Izzy incident. These two are still bickering like a divorced couple and not at all like two fearful tribes as set up by the movie up until this point. The opposite faces of a die add up to seven, but that's not possible here. Thankfully, they are able to teleport to safety just before it falls. Photo doesn't have any reason to be out here. The wall it hung upon is actually quite intact. Sprout immediately has a change of heart and ends his nearly deadly rampage because he can read a room. It's just time to be quiet and somber. It would have been a pretty good moral, actually. It's silly to trust in some magical solution to end bigotry and make everyone friends again. Such a thing would require communication and actual work. But then the crystals decided to stick it to Sunny and stick it to that moral by becoming a simple magical solution after all. Twilight Sparkle became an alicorn for being a good leader and spearheading the magic of friendship. Sunny's alicorn power-up is a result of sabotaging, vandalizing, thieving, and spreading fake news wherever she goes. Twilight Sparkle. This isn't dungeony at all. What if they don't? Up ahead. Ah! Unicorn attack! Ah, you're a 
okay? 